each of the entrances. So grab one and you'll be able to catch up on what's happening about the place. Um, this week is Ladies' Ministry Night. So the Women's Ministry have a quiz night on. So there's a couple of flyers around the place that have got some of the details. Uh, and the details are in the bulletin too. Uh, you just need to book your group of six people if you have a group of people. Uh, or you can join and they will make up some tables of ladies. Uh, so it's $10 per person, uh, raising funds for Georgie, who's heading over on missions. Come along for some fun, uh, bring some extra money. We've got the square so you can tap away with your phone and your credit card or you can bring cash. Um, it'll be a fun evening. So that's this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Grab one of those ladies. Uh, Saturday is the first, Sunday, first, first Saturday of the month, uh, so we have our corporate prayer where we come together between 9 and 10 on Saturday morning um, and just pray for people in the church, our community, beyond the community, um, come along for 10 minutes for the whole hour, uh, whatever you can spare, let's come together and just bring needs before the Lord and praise. There would be some praise points that we would have too, answered prayer. It's always great to thank him for what he does for us. Um, after the service, if you haven't already had your photo taken, uh, Ash will be around and we will get your photos taken so we can get the directory out to you all. And that will make it easy if you're fairly new to the church uh, to be able to skim through and find the face that you saw and be able to then put the names to the faces. Um, I'm going to invite Gavin and Janet up now and as they come up, Sunday school are going to head out for Sunday school this morning. Are you doing the video first or? Yep. Good morning. It's great to see so many people here that uh, know our names. It's interesting. I went to, to meet a few people and they knew who I was and a lot about us. We uh, thank you for your your prayer, your focus on us in, in, in prayer. And we're looking forward to feeling the power of it next Saturday when you meet together. Uh, we're going to start this morning with just a, a brief film, five minutes into a, a glimpse into what we do in, in Portugal. <laughs> Hi from beautiful Portugal. Hey, thank you for your investment in God's work by praying for us. We'd like to introduce you some of the team that we're working with here in Portugal. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Claudio and Daisy. Because of the virus, they've had new ministry opportunities. And with the help of their filmmaker son, Ricky, they have created a YouTube video channel and they post two to three minute inspirational videos three or four times per week. These are filmed on location and link a scripture text with a well-known Portuguese landmark. For example, in Proverbs 1.7, we read about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And this was filmed at one of the oldest universities in Europe, in Coimbra University. Claudia has been able to do online preaching in different churches in Portugal and Brazil. Daisy has prepared five videos for children on the wordless book. Many of the people we teach have met Claudia and Daisy, giving us the natural opening to send links for these videos. A few of our students have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Queridos irmãos, é uma alegria poder chegar a vocês para expressar nossa gratidão a vocês pelas vossas orações. Nós chegamos em Portugal em 2008. Ficamos muito gratos a Deus que enviou o Gavin e Janete para estarem aqui também e juntos formarmos essa equipe lutando em busca daqueles que estão perdidos. Muito obrigado por vosso carinho, vossas orações por nós. Hello, my name is Rick and I am thankful for the opportunity to help my parents with the project video. I'm graphic designer and illustrator, but with the virus I lost my job. So if you remember, pray for me. I'm looking for new opportunities and maybe in Canada or another country. Thank you. Constantino and his lovely wife Manuela are from São Tomé e Príncipe. Constantino was saved through Claudio and Daisy's ministry and they have both been faithful in reaching people in their circle of friends. Unemployment due to the COVID virus has made it necessary for Constantino to work in Germany for three months. 
pray for them in this difficult time of being apart as a family. Especially for Manuela as she cares for their four-year-old Tiago and also looks for suitable employment. Pray the discovery groups they have started that will resume when Constantino permanently returns to Portugal in September. Uh, thank you for your spray and I went to German because uh, our situation here because my, my wife lost job and so uh, I found one opportunity to work in German so I went there in June. Uh, so now I come back to meet my wife and my, my, my son so this is a, a good pleasure. And, and then I want to tell uh, all to pray for us, to be continue to pray for us because we need uh, and pray. And uh, tomorrow I will come back tomorrow to German and next month I come to here again. So thank you for all. Thank you. <laughs> Sandra and Ana Paula and their children are from Brazil. They found our group through Facebook, would you believe it? And we're excited to see what God is doing in their lives. A few weeks back, we prayed as a group for fresh opportunities to share Jesus. The following morning, Anna Paula received a message from an acquaintance, Maria, requesting a Bible study. We were all flabbergasted by this rapid response to our prayer. Daisy had the privilege of participating with Anna Paula, Maria, and their adolescent daughters. They started reading in John's Gospel. Over the past few weeks, the men folk have joined in. Pray for this group to grow in understanding and obedience to the Lord. Sandra was laid off because of the coronavirus. Please pray for a job. Unfortunately, Anna Paula was working and couldn't participate in the film. Eu gostaria de dizer a todos vocês aqui que foi uma benção de Deus ter nos aproximado com os irmãos, que foi um assim algo que o Senhor trouxe na nossa vida, foi uma resposta também de oração. Eu gostaria de agradecer, sim, por todos os irmãos que oram por esse tipo de encontro aí. Os irmãos estão nos ajudando muito e nós estamos muito felizes com isso mesmo. Estamos muito felizes, a família toda está feliz e a gente acha que o Senhor tem colocado as pessoas certas assim na nossa vida. As you can see, we're very thankful to the Lord for this, this team. We're also thankful to you for praying for us. And our team wants to say together, after three, one, two, three. Thank you. I'm really happy that you could meet meet some of our um, workers there in in, uh, in Portugal, and uh, and we want to thank you for your prayers over the last few years. We've been uh, focusing more and more on specific prayer and separating time for prayer, and I'm really excited to to hear this morning that you guys are doing that here in Craigmore um, once a once a month or once a week once a month yeah and um so yeah i want to encourage you it's really exciting to to pray with with brothers and sisters and see god answer and he always answers prayer uh, sometimes it's no sometimes it's wait and often it's completely different to our expectations and so this morning i just wanted to um uh, just to update you, that, that film was made by Inhiki, uh, Rick, as he calls himself in English. Uh, he, he made that film uh, a couple of years ago when, when we were still in, in COVID lockdown um, or in and out of lockdown. Uh, and, um, and so I thought I'd update you on the answers God's given to these prayers that he, they requested. And the verse that I wanted to focus on as well was in Ephesians 3.20. It's, it's one of my favourite verses. And it says, Glory to God, who was able to do far beyond all that we could ask or dream or imagine by the power at work in us. So with Constantina and Manuela, we were, we were praying that they would, uh, after his three months in Germany, he would come back, they would resume their, their um, contacts and ministry that they were doing and uh, that they would both have jobs. But God had other ideas and um, uh, a few weeks after making that video, they both were in Germany. He did such a good job working there. His boss was pleased. He said, look, bring your wife over. I've got a job for her. And so now they're living in Germany um, with their little boy. 
So glory to God who is able to do far beyond all we could ask or imagine by, the, by his power at work in us. Uh, Rick, who made our video, um, Claudio and Daisy's son, as he said, he'd lost his job um, because of the virus. And he uh, also had applied for a uh, working holiday visa in Canada, which he received, but because of COVID, he couldn't um, go. So he was a little bit kind of disappointed, didn't know what to do. He didn't have a job. He didn't really know what, what he was, life seemed to be kind of on hold. Uh, and, but the Lord, he was, he was just kept moving. He, the Lord used his skills. He was able to do uh, videos and um, help churches in Portugal, in Brazil, in Canada as they prepared their online ministries because as you know we all kind of went from not meeting to everything online and he was able to help them with their missions conferences and as, as missionaries all over the world sent in their, their videos to him, he edited it, put it together and made it possible so people could continue with their, their uh, missions um, focus uh, online. Uh, he also got involved with Steiger Ministries. I don't know if you know that ministry um, that's a global organisation reaching fringe young people through street evangelism, drama, music, all sort of stuff that, that in Hickey is a little bit artsy-fartsy and uh, he is um, really involved in that sort of thing and uh, he, he used his skills in, in their, uh, their organisation and they asked him, if he would like to come to Minnesota. So in March this year, just after we left Portugal, he also left and he's now uh, in uh, Minnesota helping them. And he's also helping his dad with their, um, with their channel, a Hotel Noventa Goral. Uh, and he's also, um, at the moment, their subscriptions have got to 900, which for that type of ministry, it's, it's um, cooking channels and all sorts of things like that get lots of subscriptions, but not very many in Portuguese get um, so many subscriptions. So they're very excited about that. And they've got about 240 videos on their channel. And he recently travelled to Brazil and Europe to video the Steiger, uh, uh, Steiger band, which is called No Longer Music. And he's been able to um, just be able to use his skills. And Gavin's going to give you a little update that we just received this morning about Enhiki a bit later. So that verse again, glory to God, who was able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine or dream by his power at work in us. And Sandra, he asked for a, a job. He was asking for prayer for a job. He lost his job also because of COVID. And he was able to get a full-time job, Monday to Friday, no shift work, um, in, his, in his professional area. And uh, his wife has recently been able to get a job with him in that company as well. They're very um, busy and that little group that they started with one, one other mum, Anna Paula, and her friend and their two teenage daughters is now four families meeting on a Tuesday night doing Creation to Christ with Claudio. Glory to God, who was able to do far beyond all we could ask or dream by his power at work with us. Thank you. We went to Brazil in 1994 uh, commended by the Craigmore Christian Church and co-commended by the Maryborough Gospel Chapel up in Queensland. Uh, so we've been in Brazil and we've been in Portugal and uh, seen a lot of blessing, a lot of uh, interesting things happen. When we f first went, we went to existing churches and, and helped them. Uh, much of our time in, in Brazil was helping existing churches. When we got to Portugal, it was a different strategy. We, uh, we've was starting from scratch, so learning how to find open doors into the community to get to know people and uh, find out what their needs are, what their desires are, and try and meet them. And uh, we were very blessed to be able to minister um, teaching English using the Bible uh, to Portuguese speakers, so it's quite an interesting thing. And in fact, we're still doing that right now. Um, Friday morning, we got up at uh, just before five o'clock to get on online by five and uh, 5.30 and have a, an English lesson using the internet. And it was 9 p.m. the night before in, in Portugal. So it's a little bit interesting. But it highlights the idea of change that, uh, that we need to be ready to make 
in ministry for the, for the sake of the gospel. And we've seen quite a lot of change uh, in our own development, our own ministry, our own involvement in, in the gospel. And uh, some of that change has been compulsory uh, because of things like uh, COVID. You've heard that word before, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, and uh, we have to change our plans for this afternoon because uh, we were to meet with some people who were away in Melbourne during the week and have come back with um, an active case of COVID. So, yeah, interesting times. But um, we're back in Australia now. We're facing some, some serious change, uh, some impactful change uh, in the health area. I've been diagnosed as having Parkinson's disease. And so that's a, a challenge for us to try and figure out how to meet, what to do about I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of shaking and trembling at the moment. So there's a lot of little little changes and some big changes coming along that we have to, to meet. We're, we're happy to say that um, modern medicine is doing well in combating some of the symptoms of Parkinson's. And uh, we're, we're ab- we will be able to minister for some years to come, uh, although we m- we'll get more and more trembly. And our, um, well, we, I'm including Janet, but it's... it's <laughs> She's going to be carrying a lot of the, the load as we progress. And um, I'll be preaching tremendous sermons. You did, don't get that joke quite as, much, as well as we do in, in, in Portuguese because tremer is the verb to tremble. So I'm going to have some tremendous <laughs> messages that like, like the microphone's dancing around in my hand right now. But um, we really appreciate your prayer as we face change. And uh, we're all facing change. And uh, interesting, Janet mentioned... In Hickey and some news that's fresh this morning. We received a letter from his dad, from Claudio, our co-worker, asking if uh, I would help them translate from Portuguese into English a letter of commendation that uh, it's good manners to present to a new church that you're going to. And, uh, and Hickey's now to the point of becoming in, uh, in fellowship in an assembly in America and needs a letter of commendation as soon as possible. Our role is to, to translate it into English so that the Americans can read it and uh, to sign it as uh, responsible people for Enrique's ministry. So Claudio, Sandra that was mentioned in the report and myself will put our signatures to that letter and it's, uh, it's interesting to see that stage of what we're doing when just a few years ago there was no church, there was no, there was no group meeting. So... It's interesting to see that group now, just like last week, uh, this group was commissioning Georgie to the mission field. Uh, our little group in Portugal is this tiny little group, but there's a commissioning of uh, someone to the work of God from Portugal into America. And it's interesting to see just how global the whole thing is. You know, wherever we are, we're involved in, in the gospel. I just want to say um, two things. God doesn't change. So uh, the, same, the same God of Abraham, Isaac and, and Jacob doesn't change and is here with us and, uh, and our work is with God, with God and, and by God. And God doesn't change and the gospel doesn't change. It doesn't change. It's the same message over and over and it's uh, life-changing and powerful. A verse that's very personal for me, at this particular time, it's in Second Corinthians 4, it's three verses, 16 to 18. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all, com- all comparison. As we look not, un- not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Be encouraged in your work in the gospel. It's, it goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. And we'd like to uh, we'd like to pray for uh, pray for you, uh, Gavin and Janet, in your in your ministry in the gospel. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you, 
uh, Lord, for the, uh, your calling upon uh, Gavin and, and Janet uh, to, your, uh, to your work. We thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness, uh, their, uh, the, answer, the answer of the call you place upon their lives, and Lord, for their ministry over the many years. Father, we ask that you would continue to, um, uh, to have your hand upon them uh, as, the, uh, as their ministry is, uh, has, uh, is changing uh, direction. And um, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, inst- uh, strengthen them. Lord, we pray for, for Gavin. Uh, as he um, as he um, struggles with the um, uh, with the condition of, uh, of Parkinson's, Father, we ask that you would uh, have your hand upon him and strengthen uh, strengthen him as he continues uh, in the ministry of the gospel. Father, we uh, we thank you uh, for them and ask, Lord, that you would continue to uh, to bless their their uh, their work and, Lord, that um, that the gospel would continue to go out through the uh, through Portugal. And Lord, that many would come uh, into the uh, into the kingdom through the ministry. So we thank you for them, Lord, and we ask your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Uh, look, we have um, uh, we have uh, uh, annou- uh, uh, announcement as a church. We've been uh, going through a uh, a season of change, and there are many things uh, that the uh, the elders are working through as we look towards uh, the uh, the future direction of the church. And change uh, can be difficult, but change also uh, brings new opportunities for, for growth. So we are trusting uh, the Lord that has his hand uh, over all of this and will lead us um, in his will here at Craigmore. As part of, of this, the elders are, are, are pleased to be able to bring you an update this morning. Um, uh, three weeks ago, we, uh, um, we put forward Matt, Bow- Matt Bowers as a candidate for, for eldership and invited feedback from the church. Uh, in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 3, uh, uh, we read this, uh, the saying, this saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must, uh, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. Not a, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well and with all dignity, with all dignity keeping his children as submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not, he must not be a, a recent convert or he may become uh, puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he, uh, he must be well thought of by outsiders uh, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into the snare of the devil." This is a this list is a, a list not this list is not an expectation of of perfection from the elder, but rather a, that they display a life consistent with the gospel um, and are submitted to the Lord and pursuing a character uh, of uh, that is above reproach. So I'd like to invite Matt and Annette, his wife, to come to come up. We're sorry, Phil couldn't be with us this morning as well. He came down uh, six, otherwise he would be a part of this too. But um, we just wanted to commend Matt and Annette to you over... uh, Matt's been walking with the elders over the past 18 months. And over that time, we've been able to see his his love for the Lord, his desire for the growth of the church, um, his, his servant heart, his proven character... And along with Annette, their desire for to, to be hospitable to those in the church and, and those in the community. So we are we are very confident to be able to commend them to you this morning. And as you know, the role of an elder is not a position to be taken lightly. It's um and so we've taken our time um, as we've gone through this and, and we thank you for the feedback that we've received. And uh, an elder is to be a shepherd who leads in the church, who is able to teach, who is able to protect the church from false doctrine and and encourage people in sound doctrine, um, to care for and to pray for the sick and to serve as shepherds as an example to the flock. And so um, with all of that in mind, we just want to... I'm going to read this part out just as a response from, from Matt. Matt, do you commit to serving God? in obedience to the commands of Jesus? And will you make Christ known 
in, in word and in deed. I do. Well, we, we want to thank you both for your commitment to the church, and we want to celebrate with the church as we invite you on to eldership. So let's give them a round of applause. And let's just have a word of prayer, and maybe if you want to stand with us and we'll commit, um, commit them to the Lord's service. Father, we are excited um, today just that, that you are growing your church and you're growing the leadership. And Lord, we just want to pray for a continued heart of humility um, as, as we serve and as Matt and Annette serve, Father. We pray um, that you would guard them, that you would protect them, and Lord, that you would keep their, their hearts so passionate for you, Lord, and for the growth of, of the church. Father, we, we thank you for the work that you're doing, and we thank you that we serve a good God who uh, walks through us with everything that we face, and that your mercy and your grace is new every morning. We pray that for, for Matt and Annette as they um, come into this next season of ministry. So, Father, we thank you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a seat. Okay. We also uh, are pleased to, con to confirm to you uh, again the reappointment of Phil and Andrew. Phil is unset again cannot be with us because of he has COVID, uh, and um, uh, so we are pleased to confirm to you again the appoint the reappointment of, uh, of Phil and Andrew in their pastoral roles, along with their their wives Fiona and Amy for another three years, and we look forward to uh, to all that the Lord is going to do for them in the days ahead. And the other, the other thing that we announced a, a, a few weeks ago was that we have invited Nigel and Murray to come alongside with the elders during the season uh, of change to provide um, spiritual support and encouragement, wisdom and understanding from their years uh, in here at the church. And we'd, I'd just like to ask Nigel uh, up now to, uh, to pray for, uh, for our leadership, uh, our eldership team um, as we uh, continue to seek the Lord for the church today. Thank you. I want to use some words of scripture to pray for our eldership. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, come on up. And Phil is here in spirit. Yeah, thank you. Let's pray together. Our prayer for you today is that we exhort you as elders among us as to witness, uh, as, sorry, as your fellow Christians. I have to change that a little bit. And witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Our prayer is that you will shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight not under compulsion but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge but proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Father, we do pray for these men. We ask for your protection over them. Father, protection over their households. And Lord, may they be an example to the flock. We do pray that they would lead us well. Lord, we are going through a time of change and that brings all sorts of things with it. So Lord, we do pray that you'll give them wisdom, that they will understand your leading and your guidance in their lives and collectively. And Lord, that they will take this church and use it for your glory. Father, we do pray that you protect each one of them. There will be attacks of the devil. As soon as we take on responsibility, the devil's not happy. And he will attack each one. So Lord, we pray your protection upon them. Encourage them in their own lives, we pray. And may they spend much time seeking your will through your word, we pray. So we do pray that we will be blessed and encouraged as a church, as we go on into the future, we will see your glorious hand at work. So we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing. <laughs> Yes. 
Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's here, where your blood was spilled, for my to say this at the risk of being labelled artsy-fartsy. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so I really, I really like... <laughs> I really like music. Um, and uh, the thing I like about music is the way that not only the words but also the melodies and the harmonies and all of that sort of connect with your emotions and, you know, you kind of get caught up in the experience and all that sort of stuff. That does sound artsy-fartsy. So, you know, you'd be perfectly justified. Um, but anyway, holy dooly. 
Um, I, I bring that up because I was, I was listening to some music at home the other day, and I don't know if it ever happens to you, but you know, you're listening to a song, and all of a sudden you're sort of overcome with this sort of emotion, this sort of, you know, the, the words and everything about the situation kind of connects with you and you sort of experience the, the song on, you know, uh, an emotional level. And that happened to me last week and, and the song that I was listening to uh, was from an album called City on a Hill and uh, the song itself is called Precious Jesus. It was written by a band called um, Sixpence None the Richer. And I'll read the words for you in a minute so that you can sort of hear about it. But the song is, is about remembering Jesus. The song is actually a song about communion, which is kind of what we're doing now. So that's how it kind of sort of fits in. But what, what sort of struck me as I'm listening to that song and, and, and remembering the crucifixion and remembering Jesus and whenever that happens... Um, or at that time when that happened, I was struck just by my complete unworthiness. Uh, uh, you know, to receive or to be the beneficiary of the incredible love that was demonstrated towards me at the, at the cross. And, um, you know, so you, you just kind of get this, this overwhelming sense of your, your sinfulness and, and just how you've failed and, and, you know, God is not really justified in expending his time and effort on you. And um, as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking that is not the point of communion. The point of communion is not to remind us of how unworthy we are. Except that if we come to that remembrance, that we move through that remembrance to understand how awesome our God is and how amazing his grace and how uh, unfathomable his mercy and his exceeding love to us. And it's kind of like um, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10, and I kind of only thought of this a second ago, <laughs> and I had to look it up on the internet, um, but where, where Paul talks about godly grief that leads to repentance. Grief is no good if it just leaves you wallowing in this sense of unworthiness and, and failure and, 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 you know. But grief is good if you're reminded of that, but you move through that and you become reminded of the excellencies of our God and of his incredible love for us and of what is represented in the table here, that the Son of God gave himself for us. His body was broken and his blood was shed so that we could be restored into fellowship with God and we could enjoy him forever. Let me read the words of the song, if I can unlock my phone and find it because I've been looking stuff up. Um, there it is. So it's called Precious Jesus, and it says, I remember you. Precious Jesus, I remember you. Healer of my heart, lover of my soul. It's very hard the word to, for me to read the words of a song. I just want to sing it. Trust me, you don't want that. <laughs> All right. But I'm, you know, anyway. Um, uh, on your sacred head, a crown of thorns pressed on your sacred head. Mighty king of the universe, merciful lamb, for my sin you suffered and bled. Still father forgive them, they don't understand. Sweet saviour, I heard what you said. Jesus, Jesus, we remember. As we drink from the cup of salvation, your blood. We remember your sacrifice. We remember the way that you suffered for us. Risen from the grave, Christ immortal, risen from the grave. At Jerusalem's gate, how you wept for the lost, even as palm branches waved. 
Then you proved how you loved us on Calvary's cross and rose up on the third day so that all who believe might be saved. And we remember you. Precious Jesus, we remember you. Precious Jesus, we love you. Healer of our hearts, lover of our souls. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we come to this table and we do remember you. As you instructed us to do on the night that all of these things happened, or the, on, on the night before these things happened, you commanded us to remember. And this remembrance was um, not so that we could be constantly reminded of our unworthiness or of our failure or of our sin, but what we could be reminded of the excellencies of your love and of your grace and of your goodness and of your faithfulness, of just how wonderful you are. And so, Jesus, as we come to the table this morning, we remember you. Amen. sent your son to die that we might have a relationship with you I pray as we drink this cup that we would remember your son's blood that was shed for each one of us in your son's name amen pray for the offering. Father, we thank you that you are the great gift giver. And Lord, the word says that it is always better to give than to receive. Father, we thank you you have blessed us abundantly, especially in this country of Australia. Lord, continue to give us the wisdom, Father, especially in the area of finances, Lord, that we would be people that would always be ready to give above and beyond. Lord, bless those who oversee the finances here at Craigmore. Grant them continue the wisdom. And Lord, we just want to thank you once again that you provide all our needs. And so we commit this offering to you, Father, in Jesus' name, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's stand once again as we lift our voices. my prayer in the desert when all that's within me feels dry this is my prayer in my hunger and need my God is a God who provides this is my prayer in the fire in weakness will try
Hello, good morning church. Um, I have the amazing um, privilege and responsibility to bring us the word this morning for the next 35 minutes, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, <laughs> so we've been going through the series of worship, um, and today my topic is going to be on the fact that we are actually created to worship. Um, worship is something that's very common to the world today. Um, it's something that we actually, um, the whole world worships, you see everywhere in the world. Um, you know, worship is so not uncommon. You look around the world, people are worshiping everywhere and worshiping things. There's something about us as human beings that actually draw us to worship. You know, in Africa where I grew up, um, it was so common for me to see people worship things. Very common. You know, in the towns that we lived in, there was always like a, a massive mox where the Muslims would, um, would have someone in the speaker and they would sing the song of worship and it, it, would, it would go throughout the whole town um, and people will, will actually go to the mox knowing that it's time for worship. And, and the Muslim, they actually have an obligation to actually um, pray five times um, in the day. Um, they will pray um, in, in, in the sunrise, when the sun rises. They will pray in the midday. They'll pray in the afternoon. Um, and they'll pray at nighttime. And every day you will see them, they will take their mat, they have like a mat or like this special carpet and they will lay down on the floor and, and you see it everywhere and they will bow down and, and, and say a prayer. And they would pray in hopes that um, their Allah would actually reward, reward them. You know, my dad actually was a Muslim um, before he came to Christ. And he used to talk about how they used to pray to try and get favor from God and he used to do things in order that somehow Allah would look at them and actually be, be oh, you know, because of the hard work you've done, because of all the things that you've done, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to reward you for this. In Africa, we also had what we would call juju, where... Um, very common in Africa, where people would actually make sculptures uh, or, or, or of this object or this something, um, generally very scary. Very, I don't know why it always has to look scary, but actually it generally is. And they would actually worship these objects. And other people would go to people who are the kind of like the, 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 the object speaks through this person or this God speaks to this person. And people would go to those people and they would seek these gods for help, 
for guidance, for success, for money, for riches, and they would actually go to these, to these objects and actually worship them. And it was very common to see. You know, my grandfather um, was a part of this secret society, I think they call it, um, where they actually made um, um, gods of themselves. And what they would do is that they would um, dress into, they literally call themselves monsters. We call them, I mean, demons. They would dress into demons. And what they would do is that they would actually roam the street and they would go and they would, and they, would, they were generally very scary. And I remember being petrified at them as a, as a, as a kid because they would literally come at you. And, and people would either go along with them and actually worship these things or they would be scared of them and run away from them because they were just that scary. But it's not just in Africa that you see that people actually worship things. You know, you see it all over the world. You know, Sarah and I went to Bali and for a honeymoon and everywhere you go, people burn incense and, and, and they burn it and you see it everywhere and they burn it in hopes that um, their gods would actually bring them prosperity. Um, prosperity in, in their work, prosperity in their family, prosperity in, in, in their businesses. And so every day, throughout the day, and all I ever smelled was this incense. And I actually ended up hating the smell of it when we got back from my honeymoon because it was just so much. And you smell it everywhere. And they even had like temples with different gods that people go to worship. So you see that it's very common for, for, for people to actually worship were drawn to it. You know, even in the Western world, however, in, in our Western world, you know, people aren't pushed to worship things or gods. We're actually pushed to worship ourselves. The idea that we are our own gods. And you see it pretty much everywhere in movies. Um, that we don't actually need God. And they push this idea that we don't need God, that we, all we need is to realize that we are God ourselves and we will achieve so much more. And you see it, that we need to simply do whatever makes us feel good and cater for our own glory. You know, but the truth is, um, we're either going to worship God or we're going to worship anything else that we worship, then it becomes an idol. It's either going to be that we worship God or anything else that we worship is an idol. So we can't escape the fact that um, we are actually going to worship something. We are created to worship. God created us as worship beings. And we know as Christians, that our purpose in life is actually to worship God. You know, in 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5 to 6, it says, For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father through whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things come and through whom we live. So even though there are many, many gods out there, there's only one true God. And it is found in Jesus Christ. Not objects, not man-made gods, not even ourselves but through Jesus Christ, and not even angels. You know, um, on Revelation chapter 22, the, the last book of the Bible, when the angel of God had revealed everything to, to, to John, the passage tells us that, that John actually bowed down and worshiped the angel. And look at what the angel's response was. This is what the angel said in Revelation 22, verse 9. It says, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophet, with all who keep the word of this scroll. Worship God. 
you know, the angel reminded John of this command that we are to worship God. In other words, don't worship angels, worship God. In other words, don't worship nothing, worship God. Don't neglect God, don't despise God, worship God. It is actually a command. And this is the last chapter of the Bible and this is the last duty of man. It is actually a simple command for us to worship God. God commands us to worship him. You know, we have a jealous God that doesn't want to share us with anyone or anything, but want us to worship him and him alone. You know, Jesus took it even further and said um, in Matthew 10, um, 37 to 38, it says, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their sons or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Man, those are harsh words. <laughs> so it seems. They're a very strong word from Jesus. Jesus wants us to put nothing else before him. He wants nothing in our lives to become an idol. You know, an idol can be defined as this. Anything that we come to rely on for some blessing, help, guidance, in place of a wholehearted commitment to the true and living God. Anything that takes us, our hearts, from relying fully on God becomes an idol. You know, something else that I think drives it home a bit is a song from um, one of my favorite artists. And it says this. It says, anything I put before my God is an idol. Anything I want with all of my heart is an idol. Anything I can't stop thinking of is an idol. And anything that I give all of my love is an idol. It says, because I could sing all I want to. We could sing all we want to and still get it wrong because worship is more than a song. Because worship is when we give our all to God. So we have a jealous God who doesn't want half of us, but all that we are. You know, but why is that? Why, why is it that God actually wants us to worship him in this way? Why does God require us to give him all that we are, to glorify him and him alone? Is it not self-centered people that actually seek their own glory? Why should we be excited about worshiping God? When maybe we might be hurt or broken, or maybe we might be in a situation when we even feel like it is actually God himself that actually has dealt us this card and dealt us this, this thing, and here we are, we are to give him our all. You know, after all, the Bible te teaches us that God is our everything and we are nothing. And maybe that is why the world looks at that and think, I don't want to be nothing. I am God myself. You know, when I am in this place, when I struggle to have a heart of worship before God and to be able to have a heart that gives him everything, you know, it's mostly because I've actually lost sight of who God is and who I am before him. And therefore, the idea of giving God my everything becomes more of a burden to me than it is a blessing to me. You know, a guy called um, Bob John um, once gave an illustration and said this. It says, imagine that you are a prostitute. And one day you hear that the king had made a decree that all prostitutes are actually now forgiven. And since you're a prostitute, that's actually great news. It's great news. But would that change your behavior? 
or your perception of who you are? You know, the truth is probably not. You may be happy for a while, um, but chances are you are going to go back to the same thing. You're going to continue on doing the same thing. And you will just see yourselves as a forgiving prostitute. And sometimes our Christian life can be just like that. That God, though God has forgiven us and bestowed so much upon us, we see ourselves as forgiven sinners. And we still find our identity in the fact that we are still sinners, but forgiven. You know, but what, what if the king not only forgave, but made this bride, made um, this made us his bride as well. Then you are the queen. Would that change your behavior? I mean, of course it would. I mean, why would you want to leave as a prostitute if you are the queen? You lack nothing. The church is the bride of Christ. You know, we're far more likely to worship God and glorify him when we realize that we are the queen. We won't go back to live in adultery because we lack nothing. And who we are is actually found in him. And it's a matter of how much we actually believe that. You know, Peter tells us um, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, it says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We are God's chosen people. We are his royal priesthood. We are called a holy nation, God's special possession. Our motivation to worship is actually important. We don't worship him to, give, to gain approval, his approval. We are already approved. We don't perform for him in order to be accepted. We are already accepted. Therefore, we joyfully serve him. We don't worship him so that he may someday notice us and hopefully love us. He already loves us. And it's not true because of anything that we do. Worship is not so much about what we do. It's actually a response to what God has actually done. And simply because of who he is. You know, knowing who we are is actually a primal motivation for us to worship God with all of our hearts. You know, I find when I struggle in my walk with God and when I, when I struggle um, so much in my faith, it's actually because of a lack of knowledge of God. A lack of knowledge of God is at the root of our problems. And true worship comes from knowing God. You know, worship is going to come, it's just, it's gonna be an expression when we come to a fuller and greater real realization of who God is. You know, in Ephesians chapter 16, verse 19, and Paul writes to believers, he writes to them, um, and he said to them, he said, I have not stopped giving thanks for you and remembering you, my prayers. He hasn't stopped praying for them and remembering them. And this is what he prays in chapter 17. He says, I keep asking God, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. His prayer is that they may know him better, to know God. 
He continued saying, I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe, so that we may know him and to know the hope that we have in him. It's not just that knowing is not just about even knowing God, you know, about informations. It is actually to, to have an intimate relationship with him. You know, our faith cannot latch on to what we don't know. You know, I am convinced that I will become more effective in my walk with God when I understand the tremendous position I have in God. And I think when we understand this, what we do for God will come out of our own love for him rather than what we should do for him. You know, we can be so busy doing so much for God and missing the fact that it's actually about knowing our God and building a better relationship with him what we have is a relationship with God, not a religion. And that's so different from our worship to, to, to the world's worship. It is a relationship with our Savior. Everything else has been done and everything else that we do is a response of what already has been. You know, God didn't just save us from hell and wrath we deserve. He saved us unto himself. So, if we don't see who we are in Christ, then no amount of what we do, our self-effort, our work in, in what we do will result in the worship that leads us to freedom, in that worship that God intended for us. And God will become more of someone who actually imposes and demands so much from us. To give him everything and it becomes a burden and it weighs on us. But once we see ourselves from God's perspective, that we are the queen, he didn't just save us, he made us the queen. That we are the brides of Christ. then we are free to serve our lovely Heavenly Father in true worship. Let me pray. Father, I thank you. Um, I thank you for what you've accomplished for us, Lord. Father, forgive us, Father, for we do so much and we do so little. <laughs> but Father, all that you want is for us to be real, Lord, to have a heart that is fully given to you, Lord. Father, that you saved us so that we can have a relationship with you, Lord, so that we can live a fulfilling life with you. Oh, Father, help us to, to be people who worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, knowing who you are, knowing the God that we have, Lord. And Father, give us a desire to want you and to love you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand once again, because here we are to worship.
wretched cause to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin. for what was spoken this morning. Your word says, test ourselves to see if we are in the faith. Father, Lord, an encouraging message this morning that should stir our souls, Lord, that we have been redeemed by you and we are your children, Lord. And Father, we are to be vessels of honour. And Lord, we just ask that you will continue to empower us, Lord, as we seek your face for our lives. Let us take up our cross, Lord, and continue to be representatives of you. For we are your image bearers, Lord, and this is our status. Father, to walk amongst those who are in darkness because we are light, because you are light. And so once again, Father, as we go our separate ways, Lord, continue to stretch us, continue to make us grow in the likeness of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Protect us, Father, until we all meet again in Jesus' name. For Jesus' sake, amen.